Are your weeknight meals sometimes a bore? Well, no more. Your taste buds will celebrate with my festive enchilada bake. It's the whole enchilada. So let's get cooking. Jazzy, you're going to be healthy with the Jazzy Vegetarian. Jazzy's so snazzy. We're going to cook something healthy and light. Should it do you do you do Should it do you do you do Jazzy's so snazzy. So join me in the kitchen right now. We're gonna cook something healthy and like that's right. Today's show highlights my sensational two bean enchilada casserole, an easy to prepare layered dish that is bursting with festive flavor. And then guacamole salsa dip with homemade tortilla chips starts the meal off with a fun flair, while fancy peeled salad adds color and crunch. Mango sorbet finishes off the meal with a frosty flourish. Let's prepare it now. Sensational two bean enchilada casserole. Your taste buds are going to have a fancy fiesta. This is such a great casserole, and you can make this midweek because even though it has a lot of ingredients, it's really easy to put together with things that you have on hand in your pantry. As a matter of fact, the first time I made this casserole, I had some tortillas in the refrigerator, and I said, what can I make out of that? Why don't I make a two-bean enchilada lasagna? That's what I originally called it, but when I served it to my husband, he said, this is an enchilada casserole and it really is time to celebrate. I'm just so excited to share this with you because you're going to love it. You're going to make it over and over. So here's how we're going to get started. Get a 9 by 13 or 10 by 9, whatever kind of casserole you have. Whatever you use for making lasagna, you can actually use for this dish. And then we're going to start off with some salsa. Now, I always keep salsa in my cupboard, and I'm using between 8 and 12 ounces of prepared salsa, which is between 1 and 1 and a half cups. We've got 2 tablespoons of salsa. We're just going to put that at the bottom of the casserole to keep the tortillas from sticking to the bottom. Then I'm going to add one teaspoon of olive oil. Just spread that all around the bottom. Now, you may be asking, how is this like lasagna? How is she going to do it? And what is she using and what is she doing? So here's what I'm starting off with. I have two kinds of tortillas I'm using today. One is flavored with some lime and jalapeno. And it's really festive color. And the other one are just some hand-rolled whole grain tortillas. So I'm going to switch up the layers with these different colored tortillas. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to cut the tortillas to fit inside the casserole. So first I cut them into half like that. And then I just place them right in here, like this. And another one right at this end, like this. I want to kind of fill in the middle. So I'm going to take another one and cut a nice strip about that size. Really kind of like you would put lasagna together. And that's our first layer in our casserole. I'm going to set these aside. And now we've got to have our filling. Let me grab my bowl. And what we're using for this layer is one can of white beans, about 15 ounces, and I have drained them, rinsed them thoroughly, and then drained them again. You're just going to toss those right in the bowl. Make sure you don't get that extra water in there. It's going to make your casserole runny. And then we've got to flavor each layer of our casserole. So I'm adding a half a teaspoon of tamari, and then I'm going to use about an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. A little more, a little less. You like it spicy, put a little more. You like it not so spicy, put a little less or leave it out. And mash those beans right up. And you just want to get that as smooth as you possibly can. That's going to make the first layer in our two bean enchilada casserole. You know, I think beans get a bad rap. This is really a true story. I used to say to my husband, he'd go, what are we having for dinner? That's what I hear every night, okay? Well, I'm happy to hear that because I want him to eat my food. I want him to love the food I make because I love to cook. So we have a pretty good deal going, don't you think? So he'll say, what are we having for dinner? So if I would say beans, he'd go, uh, like that. And I'd say, well, is that okay? And he'd go, oh, yeah, that's fine. 
So I really started thinking, you know, I gotta come up with some pretty fabulous fancy things to do with beans that anybody's gonna love. If you've got non-vegetarians that you're feeding, if you've got people that really think they don't like beans, this is the casserole to try because we're flavoring each layer. We're kind of hiding them, tucking them into this casserole. There's a lot of great protein, a lot of great flavor, and anybody that says they don't like beans are gonna love them after you make this. So that's a great jazzy tip. So here's my first layer. Just going to dump it all in there. I'm just going to spread that over evenly. And as we go, we're going to press it down because we're going to end up with all these pretty little layers that we're going to cut into squares. Once again, kind of like you would lasagna. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just going to put a little bit of salsa, not too much between each layer. Otherwise, it's going to get too soupy. Spread that in a really thin layer over the top like that. That's it. Now, time for more tortillas. We're going to kind of do it the same way. The first one we're going to cut in half like this. Put on both sides like that. Now, these little ends that you see here, we're keeping that. We're going to piece those in the end layers. We're not throwing those away. You keep everything in this. Now, we need the sensation of cheese. I have one block, oh, about 15 ounces of tofu. And I'm just going to start breaking that up, kind of giving it a cheese-like consistency. Again, so I'm adding into this layer a half a teaspoon of tamari, a half a teaspoon of chili powder. Ooh, that's going to give it some nice color, some nice taste. Again, about an eighth of a teaspoon or so of cayenne. And then half a teaspoon of dried cilantro. That's it. That's so nice. So there we have it. Now, we're going to add this tofu layer into our casserole. Dump it all in. Put that in there with a spatula. And that's that layer. And then a little bit more salsa. Just a tiny bit. Add a little color, add a little flavor. Use your spatula. Just spread that evenly all over the top. All right, now let's get going on our next bean layer. This is one can, about 15 ounces of black beans. I've drained them, I've rinsed them really thoroughly. Another half teaspoon of our tamari, toss that right in. One teaspoon of olive oil. And then a little salsa in this layer, two tablespoons. That's it. I'm going to mash this together just like we did the white beans. All right, now I've got my black bean layer all ready. But first I have to add some more tortillas. So once again, you're going to split that in half, one at this end, one at this end, just like you're making a lasagna. Our beautiful black bean layer is going in. Spread it nice and evenly over the top of your tortilla layer. Make that nice and even. Pressing it down as you go. Excellent. And I use about one and a half to two packages of tortillas. If you have a hard time getting anyone in your family to eat greens, this is a great way to hide them in this casserole. And what I have here is three cups of organic baby spinach. And this is so easy with the baby spinach. You don't have to chop it. You don't have to do anything. You can just throw it right in there. We want to add about, oh, a quarter of a cup of salsa here. As I said, I'm using 8 to 12. You might even use 15 ounces of salsa in this. All righty. That's it. And you just kind of blob that over the top of that spinach. Now, one more layer of our tortillas. All right, we're going to cut one more in half. You do want to press this down. That's going to help to compress that baby spinach. All right. And to top it off, a little salsa. It's a little bit over the top. 
Okay, so I've used about one and a half cups of our salsa today. That is it. We're going to tent it with foil, and we're going to put it into a 375-degree oven for about 50 minutes, and then we're going to check it out, make sure it's cooked all the way through, and we're going to top it with some vegan cheese. We're moving on to my fabulous guacamole salsa dip with my homemade tortilla chips. Easy as tortillas. Let's get this in the oven now. Guacamole salsa dip. And it is absolutely salsalicious. First, we're going to start off with a little fresh garlic. That gives it a nice little pop of flavor. One clove of fresh garlic. And seriously, you can make this dip without the garlic. What would guacamole be without avocados? I'm going to use one avocado in this. Cut them up. Ooh, that's a pretty one, isn't it? this kind of wrong side out into the bowl. No rhyme or reason to it. It's all going to get mashed up right into your bowl. You wash my hands off. Then I'm going to use about half a cup of prepared salsa. So let me get my measuring cup. There it is. Scoop about a half cup out of there. Doesn't have to be exact for this. There's no exacting measurements. So I'm going to get a little fresh lemon in here. And I'm going to use the juice of a half of a small lemon. Of course, you want to juice that up fresh. Just toss that right in there. Now a little bit of cilantro. I'm going to use about a half of a tablespoon. That's beautiful. Oh boy, that smells so good. All the different herbs in cooking, don't you find they just smell fabulous? A great aroma. All righty, a little bit of sea salt, about an eighth of a teaspoon or so. Take my masher again. I'm just gonna mash that all together. There we go. Having a nice festive meal tonight. So I like to use some colorful dishware. Mmm, that smells fantastic. And next up, we're going to do the tortilla chips. Another great use for tortillas today. And you're just going to keep rotating, cutting them into kind of little chip shapes, like that. And we're going to toss them all in a large bowl. Just like that. Just make sure they're separated. Go. Some are bigger, some are smaller. It's just fine. This literally takes about two minutes to prep for the oven. Now, these are fresh tortillas, so they do have some texture to them. They also have some moisture to them. The chili powder and the salt that I'm going to add to these is going to adhere to the tortillas so we don't have to add oil. You want to toss some chili powder right over the top. Quarter teaspoon of sea salt or so. Just get your hands in there and start kind of tossing them, rubbing that chili powder all over the top. You want to put them in a single layer on your parchment-covered baking sheet. Mmm, that chili powder, that's a fabulous chili powder. There are so many kinds of chili powders out there. It's a really easy way to spice up your food. That's all there is to it. We're going to put them into a 400-degree oven for 7 to 10 minutes. Do watch them closely so they don't burn. And next up, this is going to pair just beautifully with my two-bean enchilada casserole. It's my fancy peeled salad. Mm. So here's how it goes. You're going to get your bowl. I have about six cups of romaine lettuce. Romaine lettuce. Sounds pretty plain, but it's really pretty fancy. Romaine lettuce makes such a great base for so many things. Sandwiches, salads, I even use it in soups, uh-huh. And it just adds a little crunch to anything you may be cooking or serving. Ah, here it is. Look at this. 
I've got some mixed lettuces in here, but we certainly have some romaine along with some other lettuce varieties. I like to use romaine in smoothies. Just take a couple of leaves of romaine, put them in your blender along with some frozen raspberries, a frozen banana, a little bit of water, and blend, 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 and you have an automatic green smoothie. But you're hiding the greens in the smoothie. Because you use raspberries, it turns out pink and not green. So think about growing romaine, think about buying it, think about using it in your meals on a regular basis. So let's get back to cooking. Just tear it into bite-sized pieces. Toss it right in there. Set this aside because I've got to peel my fancy peeled salad. Just take a zucchini, wash it, clean it really well. You want to keep the peel on for this. That's why I call it fancy peeled salad. And you just want these nice little thin slices. Okay. Then we've got some carrots. See what a beautiful color this has? And we're gonna add some other surprises to this salad that make it really, really, really appetizing. So this is really a quick way to cut up your carrots. So I've used two carrots. I have a half a cup of minced purple onion, and then 12 to 14 pitted green or Kalamata olives, any kind of olives you like. And then this is what gives it the jazzy pizzazz, is I have one jar, about eight ounces, of marinated artichoke hearts. And I've drained them well, chopped them up a little bit. We're going to toss it at the last minute with a little bit of store-bought balsamic dressing. Now, for one little extra bit of taste, I just have three tablespoons of raw pumpkin seeds. You're just going to toss them into your blender. We're just going to grind them until they become the consistency of Parmesan cheese. Got a lot of great taste. They add some great texture to this salad. There we go. That is it. See, it kind of has the consistency of dried Parmesan cheese. So we're just going to toss this right over the top of our salad. Get that all on there. We're going to toss this at the last minute. So let me just set it aside. And I do smell my casserole. I've got to get that out of the oven. It's been in here for about 50 minutes or so. Ooh, yeah, that's steamy. Isn't that pretty? I'm going to be using about one cup of vegan cheese. And what's going to happen is the top of this is going to crisp up. Turn your oven down to about 350, and you're going to put that in there for about 10 to 15 minutes until that kind of melts over the top. Let it cool for about 15 minutes before you cut it. And you're going to have a fabulous, sensational two-bean enchilada casserole. But I've got one more little trick up my sleeve. We haven't made dessert yet, have we? Well, I've got that fantastic cooling frosty mango sorbet. Uh -huh. Mango, mango sorbet. It's a beautiful, beautiful, jazzy, delicious day. Oh, so I'm happy when I'm singing. And this is such a great dessert. You can use frozen mangoes for this. You can either buy them in your refrigerated frozen section of your grocery store, or what I do is I like to buy the mangoes when they're in season and I peel them, I cube them, put them into the freezer and you've got frozen mangoes. This could not be easier. There's only three ingredients, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna start off by adding some spring or filtered water. Just a little bit. I'm gonna add water as we go. And this is about equivalent to two or three mangoes that I have here today. There's no exact recipe for this because your mangoes are always different sizes. So you just want to kind of eyeball it. But it's a little bit of water, your mangoes, and some maple syrup. That's the whole thing. You can also use agave syrup with this. I'm adding about a tablespoon and a half or so. Now you do want to add this water a little bit at a time because if you add too much, you're going to end up with a mango smoothie. So there you go. A little bit more water. Tiniest little touch. Better to add it a little bit at a time. All righty, mango sorbet. Nice and frosty. I like that. Frosty. 
frosting. Let's get a little ice cream scoop. You're gonna see it really has the consistency of that fabulous sorbet you might buy in the marketplace. But it's got such a fresh taste to it. One more here. Ooh, that's a nice big portion. And I've got some beautiful little mint sprigs to put right on the top. Isn't that gorgeous? My mango sorbet. Now I'm gonna get my festive casserole out of the oven and I'm gonna plate this baby up for you. And you know what? I'm the lucky person who gets to taste it. So let's get that now. My festive enchilada bake. But before I take a little taste, I'd like you to see my wonderful fancy peeled salad. I've just put a little bit of balsamic dressing over the top. You've got those pretty bits of carrots and that zucchini. That all gives such a nice pop of color. It's really, really good. Mmm. Wow. That is delicious. Now, look at these fantastic homemade tortilla chips. They're so nice and crispy. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that guacamole salsa dip. Mmm, wow. That pop of fresh lemon, a little bit of garlic, that fantastic salsa, and of course that avocado, and these crisp, crisp chips. Look how crisp they are. Mmm, they're so delicious. And of course, I've got my sensational two bean enchilada casserole. You can tell how excited I am about this. The nice thing is you get a little bit of all these wonderful tastes in every single bite of this fantastic casserole. That is so good. Spicy, but not too spicy. And all those different layers with the black beans and the white beans and a little bit of that tamari giving it a little bit of pizzazz and that chili powder and the cilantro and that vegan cheese on the top. Such a great, great flavor. You must give it a try. And after you've had a nice spicy meal, you want something cooling, frosty, refreshing. And what could be better than my three ingredient mango sorbet? Look at how pretty that is. That's really gonna cool down your palate. I'd like to thank you so much for joining me today. And if you're looking for a zesty weekday meal, your taste buds are gonna love my jazzy enchilada bake. So until next time, be happy, be healthy, and be well. From the Jazzy Vegetarian. Visit our website at jazzyvegetarian.com to connect with Laura, see videos, find your favorite recipes, and more. Follow Laura on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Laura Theodore's Jazzy Vegetarian Classics features recipes from this series, and it's available for $26.95. Jazzy Vegetarian, a collection of favorite recipes, is available for $24.95. A set of both cookbooks is available for $44.95. For information or to order, visit jazzyvegetarian.com. Organic love, 100% natural, yes it is now, organic love. I've got no additives, or no preservatives, it's real intuitive, it's downright primitive. Organic love, organic love, is 100% natural, yes it is now.